Welcome back, OIG family, to another exciting episode in our AMA series. Today, I had the privilege of speaking with James Bailey, who is the head of business development at Subquery. Subquery is a blockchain developer toolkit which forms the backbone of Web3 infrastructure. Remember, if you like the content, subscribe, hit the bell notification button, and smash the like button to stay up to date with all the stuff coming out of OIG. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the AMA. Awesome. Well, James, pleasure to have you on our show today. Um, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your association with Subquery? Hey, everyone. My name is James Bailey. I'm the head of business development at Subquery. It's a pleasure to be on here today. Thanks. Um, and maybe I'll start some background about myself. Um, I started as a developer many years ago, but um, learned pretty quickly that I was a pretty terrible developer. So um, went into business development instead, which is, which is kind of more my background in product management. It's more around sales. It's about making sure that what we build is good for the customers. Um, so yeah, been involved with a few companies around the place, um, a few startups, a few big uh, corporates. Uh, but this is actually the first full-time job in a blockchain company. And uh, it's, it's gone crazy. So um, fun time so far. Awesome. And, uh, you know, welcome aboard to the, to the full-time gang on, uh, on blockchain technology. I'm sure there's a lot of us starting to get in now. And, you know, it, it's starting to grow uh, exponentially. So it's great to hear that, mm. you know, we're, we're all on board for the long run. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about the core team that's behind Subquery? Yeah, sure. So uh, just over a year ago, Subquery kind of started in February 20, 2021, I think. I can't remember. These, these years are flying past. So just, just over a year ago, we started Subquery. Uh, and um, our CEO, Sam, has been involved in building blockchain tools since early days, Web3, um, back in the original ICO boom, for example. Uh, and with, you know, one of our CTO, Ian, is, you know, was involved in like one of the earliest substrate hackathons. So we've got a lot of deep uh, expertise from a long time back, especially back in the ICO times. Um, and we kept talking to customers back then, and we keep hearing the same problems around data, data availability, which is obviously what, what Subbury is set up to solve, is making data more accessible. So on that on that note, um, you know, obviously uh, data is a huge uh, a huge piece of uh, blockchain uh, as a whole, as well as security. Um, so, you know, let let's start with why do you feel that the industry needs subquery, and and yeah, you, yeah, that's great. It's that's, that's key point to start with, right? Is is why why do we need these these data tools like subquery? So for those that don't know much about how blockchains work, and there's not many people that do know how blockchains work, and they're, a bit, um, they're a bit very technical. Um, a blockchain is, is like, is a chain of blocks it's in the name. But what that kind of means is you can, you can imagine like a book. And imagine if you got your, your, you know, your Harry Potter book and you wanted to show a, in your, so, you know, the, the Harry Potter books there, and you wanted to create an application that shows every page that Ron appears on, Ron Weasley appears on. Um, to find what pages Ron's on, you have to literally go through every page and looking for Ron's name. And it'd be the same thing, that exact that same example is like asking a blockchain, give me the list of all my transactions that I've made for my account. You have to go through every block sequentially looking for your account. It's the most inefficient way to, to be able to query data. Um, and so blockchains are very ter are, are terrible if you want access to data quickly for your applications, whether the wallets, NFT platforms, DeFi platforms, the metaverse, you know, whatever, whatever platform you want to build or application, it needs data and it needs to be able to read that data quickly. And that's what we do at Subquery. We build a tool that makes it very easy for a customer of ours, like an NFT provider or a DeFi application or whatever, uh, to build a pipeline to access that data, build their own custom API, their own fast, flexible, uh, reliable, and eventually decentralized API. Um, and the API is, is built with Subquery. Subquery gives them an API for their app and they can build better applications with that faster, um, more easily, and uh, feel safe that it's gonna keep running in the background. And that, that's a very interesting example, uh, which pretty much uh, explains how you know, subqueries aim to fi aims to fix uh, the the data uh, um, data query 
within uh, blockchain mm. industry. But um, how how does it achieve this? Because obviously, I'm sure there are other. Uh, you know, you, you probably have competition that try has tried uh, to do the same thing, uh, or maybe not. Mm. But how does Subquery aim to to uh, solve this? And also, what's unique about it from Subquery's perspective? So. The way that we solve this is essentially building a um, tool that scans the blockchain. So as soon as something is added, as soon as a new block is added, it will go through and, and scan that new block for any information that you want to know about. Um, so when you're building a subquery project, you're basically telling it, I only care about this information. I only care about uh, actions or events in my smart contract. And a subquery will monitor the blockchain and find that stuff. So that's kind of how it works in a nutshell, how you set it up. And it's very easy. We, we make it extremely easy for developers to, to get started. That's one of our main priorities with how we build subquery. It's got to be easy and accessible. And with that being said, uh, I would assume that the majority of users uh, would be developers. Uh, is that right? That's right at the moment. So at the moment, Subquery is a developer tool. There's no doubt about that. Um, and at the moment, uh, most of our customers are developers are building new applications. But that being said, we are moving towards a decentralized subquery network. So the whole point of that subquery network is that anyone around the world can help us run the infrastructure for these projects. So the problem with the existing subquery, it's not a huge problem, but it's, it's something that is a bit strange in a decentralized world is that all these decentralized apps are relying on the centralized service and it's running very well. It's not going down, but it's, it's a, it's a point of failure. It's a, it's a single point of control. So we're trying to rebuild or well not rebuild, but extend subquery so that we can run these projects in a decentralized way. And that means anyone can, uh, you can, I can, uh, anyone else, and we can all run these projects on our computer. Um, they're all very easy to run. Um, it costs some computation, but I can be rewarded for all the work that I do, A, indexing that project, and B, for um, the amount of queries and, and requests for data I answer. So that's the kind of model we're coming in. And through that, we're building a lot of ways for non-technical, non-developers, non-infrastructure non people, non-application uh, builders, you know, normal, everyday um, people that are really interested in to sub-query and what we do. Uh, to take part. And that one of those ways is, is by delegating. Um, delegating is essentially staking to your favorite indexer. Mm. So there's an indexer which is running the, the computation software that's running and providing data to the network. Um, and as a delegator, you can pick an indexer that's still doing very well. Um, that's got a really good knack for finding early stage projects before they go big. Um, and you can stake or delegate your tokens to support that indexer. And you can get a cut of the fees the rewards that the index receives. So it's like it's like staking, but it's more active. You know, it's not yeah. like putting your tokens and assets into like a um, you know a fund that's it's been very active about who you support and where you support. Essentially, you're you're providing uh, you're supporting actually the a tool and that that's being used mm. and and you're reaping the rewards of of it being used. So the popular as the popularity rises of that tool, you know, so so exactly. does the the reward, right? So very interesting uh, dynamic there, um, and you know you mentioned that as of right now, I, I would I would assume that we're still uh, subquery is still in a uh, centralized form factor, but potentially will be upgraded to a decentralized uh, form factor. And w when do you think that would? Yeah. Be? So well, it's sooner than you think, actually. So subquery, there's there's three products of subquery. There's there's an SDK, which is an open source piece of software that anyone can use, anyone can run. So we have customers that that have taken that SDK, that have written their projects in it, and then they're running that on their own infrastructure. So we don't deal with that. Okay, like it's it's free to use, it's open source, and it always will be free. Okay. There's a hosted service or a managed service, um, and this is the second product. And many customers in Polkadot, so some of the biggest wallets that a lot of us will use every day, um, a lot of the scanners, NFT platforms, huge amounts of customers will take this subquery project and will publish it to our managed service and we'll run that infrastructure for them. So we save them all the time and hassle running the infrastructure, which is, if you've ever run infrastructure, it's a pain in the ass. It's, yeah. it's painful. So we run that for them. 
and um, we're doing over we're doing i think more than 300 to 400 million api requests per day wow um, to all the different projects in the host and service so this is already quite large um, but that is centralized although we do a lot of internal work to you know basically because you can't run 400 million requests on a single computer you kind of have to split them up across different ones so we're kind of you know decentralizing but it's centralized in the organization way the yeah. subquery network though is coming out and we've just finished what we call season two of the test network we're going to do three seasons season one was a very early like alpha season two was kind of like a beta and season three would be a public beta we just finished season two um, we had 150 indexes uh, invited on in our test network and we managed to test most of the index behavior. Um, we managed to simulate some serious level of network activity. So we simulated 2,000 requests per second, which is essentially 200 million requests per day. So we've kind of already simulated the network can kind of can scale, you know, to that to that that size that we need it. So it's coming soon. You think we've now got enough information that we need to line up for the public uh, test net, and that's going to kick off in about two weeks' time and uh, line ourselves up for um, going map public. So token sale, um, launching the main net, and here begins the subquery network. Amazing. So, I mean, uh, you know, with 150 indexes, you, you, you surely had enough time to stress test the, the network as well as the, the platform. Um, it's so not just stress testing like the network, it's also stress testing like our documentation mm -hmm. and our support processes, right? Because these indexes are like, some of them are really technical. And most, a lot of them are just our ambassadors. And some ambassadors, again, very technical and some not many, not so. And so they had to kind of, we had to figure out where in our documentation, you know, we skipped over the parts. So um, it makes everything better in the end. Um, we found that it was actually our load generators that were that were peaking, not the, the load and wow. the network itself. Like we couldn't simulate more requests. Amazing. Um, we had the limit there. Really cool stuff. Uh, uh, so. On that note, um, obviously, uh, you're, you're, you're doing all of this with regards to season one and season two of uh, your test net, um, I, I would assume on a single chain, right? Uh, main, mm -hmm. So what are your ambitions for multi-chain deployment uh, in terms of subqueries uh, upcoming roadmap? How does that look? Yeah, so we announced recently that we um, provided, we're provided support in subquery for not just Polkadot and any Polkadot substrate based parachain. So all those are covered. Um, we also just announced we're providing support for Avalanche. Um, and also we announced Terra, which was kind of bad timing, unfortunately, but yeah. um, a lot of developers in the ecosystem, are, you know, we now know and talk to. So um, we're working through non ETH based, you know, generation three blockchains to provide support to those as we go through. Uh, and we expect to add support for more of those. And one of the key things with our network, um, compared to competitors or alternative solutions in this case, um, we are building our network so that you can run any project from any different supported chain that we support on that core subgrain network. So it doesn't matter where your project, what, what chain your project's indexing, if it's Moonbeam or Akala or, or Polkadot or Avalanche or Terra, um, your project can still run on the subquery network. Um, and that's a real important part for our multi-chain ambitions. Um, so it, all the full support that we provide, all three products, the network, the, the managed service, and the SDK, all support all networks that we support. Amazing. So, and as you venture into these uh, other chains, uh, obviously we're gonna ha need a, a, a medium of, of transactions in terms of you know a native token. So how does, how does Subquery's native token provide utility to the network? What will it be used for? Yeah, so very simple. So we're looking for like a marketplace for data. So I'm an indexer. I do a lot of hard work. I build up, I set up all the infrastructure. I, I get some cloud services. I set up a database and I do all the indexing to that. And I go to the market and I say, look, I've got data for this really cool project that you want. Okay, I'll sell it to you. I'll sell it to you. And you as a consumer, you're running an app. Um, you want to buy that data for your app. So you pay me in subquery tokens um, for the work that I do. Okay, and we come up with agreements and we've got different ways you can do the agreements there. Um, delegators, as I said before, are third parties that can come in and support me. I'm doing well as an indexer. I've got some good return. I, I share my rewards with, with 
uh, with Delegate as well. Um, that's why they would support me. Um, now, you can act as all three of these participants kind of at once. Um, you obviously, it would be kind of a waste to, to buy stuff from yourself um, because you take you lose some margin there. But yeah, it, it's those, that's really simplistically, it's a data marketplace, a way that you can buy and sell data. And I mean, in the information age, that, that's exactly what we need, right? So it's really cool to see. Um, let's switch gears here and move on to our Twitter question segment. These are questions that were uh, s selected from our community when we posted the announcement over a week ago. Um, and we have three questions selected. We'll start with question one. And this person asks, as I read that the main purpose of subquery is to provide data for projects in Polkadot and Kus Kusama blockchains, will subquery participate in either of the two parachain auctions? Do your products and services require additional parachain features to run? That's an excellent question. And um, it comes, it, it relates quite well to what I was uh, thinking around this. So we're lucky that we've been in Polkadot for a long time and we've been able to watch a lot of the parachains launch. We work, we work very closely with most parachains, actually. We're on, we're on kind of very close basis with many of them. And what we saw is that, yes, launching a parachain is really interesting. It's a really um, great community building process. It galvanizes the community for your direction and, and allows you to reward them. Um, it's a lot of work, though. It's just a huge amount of work. And when you step back and think our priority is to, to launch a sub network, what made it sense for us is to launch as a smart contract on an existing parachain. And so we've decided to launch with Akala, Akala's um, parachain. Um, will be one of the first projects launching there. And um, we can focus on building the network and they can focus on building the infrastructure, the, the chain itself. Um, there's also some benefits that they're bringing us like an on-chain decentralized exchange. You don't have to pay in some crypto, you can pay in whatever you want. Um, but yeah, there's benefits there. That being said though, we do have some longer term plans for more features that we probably can get from a car or we'd have to talk to a car about getting. And that's when it might make sense for us to go to our own chain, um, our own parallel chain. But there's no immediate uh, plans for that, primarily because if we want to get to market fast, we've got to you know, focus on the core thing. We can't spend time launching parachain, doing a crowdfunding auction, um, going for a slot, all that stuff. It's, it's a lot of extra work, it's an extra like three or four months. Exactly. And, you know, launching on an existing infrastructure provides stability for you, like you said, to focus on the product, right? So that 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 creates a, a seamless transition to your, your main launch. And um, yeah, looking forward to that, right? Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. So let's move on to question number two here. And this person asks, from the white paper, I see that there are one to one closed agreements and open agreements between consumer and indexer. So if a consumer feels the need for multiple indexers, can he modify the closed agreement to an open agreement in between? Yeah. So let's let's take a step back and look at how you can pay for your data. I said that subcredit network is a data marketplace mm -hmm. where, where buyers and sellers interact to, um, to find the kind of the middle ground. Um, there are three main ways you can pay for stuff. So very common across blockchain today, um, transaction fees, like per transaction. Um, so in this case, you can pay me 0.01 sub query tokens for every um, request I give you. Very straightforward, very low level, okay? And, and that's what happens most across the industry today. It's easy to calculate, it's simple, okay? So there's pay as you go models like that. We don't think that's the future though. We think that's got some issues. Um, and if you look around the real world web two today, tell me how many different services do you use transaction fees for? like the music that you listen to, the movies you watch, the games that you play, it's all on subscription, okay? Yeah. You know that every month you're gonna pay $20 to access this service and you'll get the entire library for free or for, for that cost. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's simple. Um, businesses love it because it's easy to forecast um, the revenue that I'm gonna earn. So I know what, how I can offset my costs. And consumers also, well, you know, some love it, some don't, but it, it makes sense because you know how much is going out of your bank account every month, okay? Yeah. And you feel like you can just use as much reserve as you want. It's just kind of there. You don't just sit the anxiety every morning going like, am I going to, you know, tip over the edge here today because I'm watching a three-hour movie rather than two-and-a-half-hour movie or something. I don't know. Like, you know, like you, 
you have a bit more freedom to, to engage the platform, if you will. Yeah. So we're seeing out the kind of a subscription model, which is called page, like it's called um, subscription agreements. And there are two types, it's closed and open. So close is agreement between two parties and two parties strictly. You and I agree that we're gonna, you're gonna buy a thousand subquery requests a day, maximum for 10 subquery tokens, okay? So every day you get up to a thousand, what is that, go crazy, have little as many as you want, and you're gonna pay me 10 subquery tokens at the end of that day. So it's kind of like a subscription model. We can, re we can renew this constantly, okay? So we're happy with it, things are good, we can renew. Um, we can also renegotiate, we can increase the limit, whatever. Um, but there's, there's, there's revenue and, and cost stability. There's open agreements, which is slightly more advanced. So a closed agreement is between two parties, you and I, and open agreements between infinite number of parties. Hmm. So there's this, there's this plan that we've put up, okay? Some, we've agreed that there's a thousand subquery tokens, a uh, sub thousand requests per day, there's 10 subquery tokens. That's our plan that we've agreed on, okay? And maybe in other consumers, like that's actually a really good plan. I want that as well. You know, someone else building another app. It's like that, that's quite solid. I'll, I'll jump on that as well. So now we have two consumers. And another index that sees, oh, there's a lot of traffic coming to me. I'm making a lot of money. Maybe I should jump into that. And so you kind of get this marketplace effect where you have multiple consumers and multiple indexes all supplying data to that same plan. And it's kind of passed through the plan, but the, the subquery network will total who receives what. Um, based on the work that you do on the amount that you've staked. Um, so there's a, there's a bit of maths there, but essentially um, it allows more indexes and more consumers to participate to the same rules. Um, and we think that's going to make a lot of improvements around uptime, reliability, performance, because you're going to make requests not to me as an index on the other side of the world, but to an index that's maybe in the local data center here. And that provides a lot better reliability. No, um, no. Now, does the, does, uh, the rate or, sorry, the, does the uh, volume or uh, participation have an effect on the use of that uh, particular open agreement, for example? Um, I would imagine if, if it was, like you're saying, a, a, a hit amongst uh, some of the people looking at mm -hmm. all the other open agreements, then obviously they would all flock to it. Would, would that have any... That's supply and demand. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's supply and demand, right? So... You know, one way of like, if, if some, if I'm an indexer and I'm, I'm being like taking way too much money, like, you know, I'm, I'm holding you to ransom and basically charging you an arm and leg for something that's really basic. Mm -hmm. The market's going to see that they're going to see how much they're earning and they're going to come in and fill that gap. And the whole point here is if you go back to your economics course, and, which is what token economic models are going back to economics 101 is supply and demand curves, yeah. um, finding that middle ground, um, finding that optimal cost. Exactly. Um, so we're trying to build a system that allows the system to find that cost, um, but also um, give everyone in the playground a bit more certainty around the revenues, which is why this is agreements. And these agreements may not be a day, they might be for a month. And you might agree for this fixed price for a month. Um, and then the end of the month, you know, people might come in and offer you a lower price. And either the new index that can, or the, the old index that could drop their prices to that, or they're probably not going to get a contract, you know, they're going to just... They aren't going to earn any revenue. Yeah, it makes sense. No, it makes sense. Like you said, supply and demand. So very, uh, and demand. very efficient and streamlined way of handling that. We all we do is we're selling like subquery is, is a data marketplace, and and one of the cool interesting thing about subquery you have to think about is it, like it's like selling petrol. Mm -hmm. um, it's selling a commodity, right? Like there's nothing stopping another indexer from indexing the same data because everyone has access to blockchain. It's free. That data is is a commodity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like gas in terms of how you should sell it. Um, we're selling the same product. Um, you know, they, they brand gas differently, but it's all the same petroleum underneath it, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. Very cool stuff. Let's move on to our last question uh, from Twitter. And this person asks, what are subquery networks global expansion plans? Are you focused on the market? or focused on something else? For example, your platform development and users or partnerships? Very uh, broad uh, question there. Yeah, so there's kind of three main focus areas right now. So the biggest focus, and, the, and it's just been driving us all year so far, has been the subgrid network. Just We're just so <laughs> single-mindedly focused on launching the subgrid network because we think it's gonna be the future. 
of data infrastructure for, for Web3 as we're trying to make it as. We're trying to make an open, fair, equitable uh, network that anyone can participate in and it's really a better alternative to what is status quo. So that's the number one priority. Um, that's that's building a kind of a product um, around that network. And then the second um, milestone here is, or the second focus is building a community, right? So if we're going to build a network, we have to build a community around it. People that want to, um, not just customers, um, not just people that are building some group projects, but also people that are, you know, interested in, and want to be delegators in our network. So building a community is also a massive um, priority for us. And, and um, it was a lot easier um, in the bull run. Kind of, it's interesting seeing how the community falls off a little bit in the bear market. Um, but we still have a very strong community and a very strong Discord uh, and, a, and a big Twitter following. And um, if you want to kind of keep up to date with um, where we are with public sales, so we're launching public sale for the subgrain network quite soon. If you want to kind of keep up to date with the, the timelines, I do suggest following our Twitter or our Discord um, to be the first to know. Um, and then the third main priority is, is really just not losing sight of adding new features and new functionality to our existing tools. Like we are the biggest player in Polkadot in this indexing space. Uh, and there's a reason for that, right? We provide flexible, fast, and open indexing solutions for some of the biggest pr protocols and teams out there. Um, and we can't lose sight of the new features and the scalability improvements and the reliability improvements and the indexing speed improvements that we need to keep doing. Um, so. There's a lot of stuff on, um, and there's a reason why the team's grown from like seven people last year to about 30 right now, um, and it will continue to grow um, because we just have to keep building tools that our customers want and need uh, to build better products themselves. And obviously a lot on your your plate, so you, you, you need the extra you know uh, support from the team, and uh, obviously that's, that's going to show uh, in the product's quality in the long run, right? So very, very good the stuff. The key is to get everyone around a, a shared kind of goal of what we want subcredit to be like in a year's time. Because if you look at every decision to those like goals, if you have the clear goals that like, we want it to be like this, and if you look at every decision around like, should we build this or this, or should we spend time on this? You can always ask like, does it help us achieve those goals? And if it doesn't, you should really seriously think about if you want to do that or not. <laughs> Remarkable. Well, that wraps up our uh, Twitter questions segment. So we'll just wrap up here and go over to our last couple of questions, which uh, re really revolve around, you know, uh, Subquery's uh, achievements to date. And, and, you know, it's been a long time coming, obviously, and you guys have been in development for a while. So what could you tell us some things that you are proud of that you've achieved uh, so far? And also looking forward, you know, what are you most excited about? Yeah, the multi-chain stuff, I'm quite proud of. We've always wanted some creative in multi-chain. Um, and we've said this for a long time. And it, like we're talking about this for a year before we kind of got around to actually doing it. Um, and we finally kind of launched support for, for Avalanche and for Terra, bad timing, but um, so important. Um, and we've now, like the first time you do this is really hard. Like rewriting or re-engineering your, your code to work across different chains, it's tough. But the second time and the third time, it gets easier and easier and easier because by that time, you've re-engineered most of the main components so that they're very configurable and flexible. Um, and so now on, it's like adding new chains is not that crazy. It's not that difficult. It's kind of like it's a common process that we, we know we have to do and, and, and achieve. So I'm looking forward to seeing a quick succession of new layer one supports this year. Um, we have a goal of a pretty high number of support. Um, but there's a lot of networks out there that don't have any tools like subquery and, and their developers are hurting because they need it. Yeah. Um, so we're moving into those networks as soon as possible. Um, and then this network, you know, as I said, this whole year has been consumed by this damn network. Um, <laughs> and uh, finishing season two, this this kind of closed beta with 156 indexes and, and, and pushing the traffic through that we want to do, that kind of like ticks all the boxes of us saying like, Yes, we haven't made a huge mistake. Um, what we design and what we what we're going to build, it, it, it's probably going to it's, it's probably going to work. You know, there's no reason why it's not going to work. It's like a big test point for us. It was like seeing a car roll on its wheels for the first time. Um, yeah. And uh, so that was a real cool milestone. And, and and yeah, launching the main network just yeah. That's going to be a big one 
draft. Amazing, amazing. And uh, obviously, you know, with all the things we've mentioned today, where can everybody that's watching this AMA find you guys? Yeah, so we're pretty big on Twitter. Um, go look for us, Subquery Network uh, is our Twitter handle. And then um, also jump onto our website, go right down the bottom, and you'll see it, join us on Discord. Um, most of our communities on Discord, whether you're a developer, um, whether you're just an investor, whether you're um, just curious, uh, there's a place for you on Discord, and we have like 30,000 people on that Discord um, supporting each other and, and answering each question. So it's a very friendly place there. That's kind of our, our main location, our main community. Um, and that's the best place to go for updates and get maybe sneak peeks of what's coming. Yes. Yeah, so to all our viewers, the official links will be in the description below. Thank you to James for being on our show today. It was a pleasure having you and talking about the future that Subquery is making for blockchain industry and the world uh, of data. So thanks again, James. It was a pleasure having you, and uh, we can't wait to have you on again. It was my pleasure too. Thank you very much, and uh, excellent questions. Um, great topics, and it's always good to talk about different ideas like this. Awesome. Thank you. Well, OIG family, that wraps up another episode in our AMA series. We hope you liked it. Remember, subscribe, hit the bell notification button, and smash that like button to stay up to date with all the stuff coming out of OIG. Until next time, we'll see you soon.